It's an exciting weekend because it's out in the garden nursery in Malala and it's the Cascade Nursery Trail weekend. So that is so cool, Carol. It is, it's so fun. It's our spring fever open house. Excellent. And you of course have a selection to talk about, but there's plus more and more here. Oh, this so. is just a tiny, tiny selection. Where do we want to start? Okay, um, start the grasses. So we've got some grasses. You know I love ornamental grasses. These are all different types of Calama grasses. You can see they come in variegated, they come in green. For being a deciduous grass, grass, they're almost year-round interest, so, and they're easy. They are very carefree. Yeah, and they're just so pretty. What great they're motion also. in the garden. Yes, all the time. Yeah. And then this one down front with these little tiny bell-shaped flowers. That's pretty. Like the Sporum night heron. When it first comes up, it's really, really dark chocolate brown. It has these pretty little yellow flowers, and then it kind of starts to lighten out through the season. It's actually on a mild winter semi-evergreen. They can grow anywhere from three to six feet, just depending on your garden. Uh, and then sun and shade, or shade? Sun to part shade, oh, yeah. Oh, perfect. And then a variegated astrantia? astrantia? No, it's no. actually a, um, oh, Nadia. a Nadia, yeah. And it's uh, fire and ice, I mean, I'm sorry, thunder and lightning. Sorry, one of these things. We've had so much of that in the last <laughs> few months. Um, but it's a beautiful variegated with amazing flowers. If you take some time to deadhead, you'll have flowers most of the summer. Perfect. And then let's talk about this taller one in the back here. This is Aphrodite, Calicanthus Aphrodite. It's also behind us. Mm -hmm. um, we, we call her our goddess of the garden. She Aww. starts blooming, she started last week, so the week before Memorial Day, and actually will bloom pretty close to Labor Day. Wow. All summer long, very easy, absolute fantastic plant. Nice. And then some pretty dark foliage. What's the, what are those? Those are some, as a selection of Sambucus or elderberries. There's different, they come in different sizes, different leaf textures, and they all have that really beautiful pink flower this time of the year. Carol, there's three different Sambucas, so what's the difference? A lot of it is texture and size. So you have black lace, which is really cut lace. This is black towers, a much coarser. Both of these can be pretty big plants. And then the one in the front is very, very compact. It's laced up. It still can get six feet tall, but it's gonna stay much more narrow and much tighter growth. And they all have that pink flower. They all have the pink flower and they all love lots of sun. Oh, nice, I love that. And then right next to it is another pink flower. That one is a heucarella. So it's a cross between a tiarella and a heucara. So it has attributes of both. It's got a nice pink flower that actually blooms all, all spring and into summer. There's still more flowers coming on it and we're almost to June. Nice, nice. And then there's the Astrantia. Yeah, there's the Astrantia. <laughs> this one is Star of Fire, so there's all kinds of different ones. This is the darkest one that I've found. It has a beautiful deep flower, has really pretty foliage. Um, they do best in full sun, but not hot afternoon sun. A little bit of shade in the summer does really well on them. Uh, and so it is the weekend of the Cascade Nursery Trail. So you're open here, but there's other cohorts yes, involved there are. in this. There's eight of us this year. Excellent, excellent. And so I'm going to toss to Ryan because he's at another one of the stops. Thanks so much, Carol. You're welcome. Well, we're out here on another stop of the Cascade Nursery Tour. I'm with Kristen, and we're out here at Hydrangeas Plus. And Kristen, you are, have a stop out here this weekend and open to the public. That's right. We have our Cascade Nursery Trail event, our first one of the official one of the season. Uh, and we'll all be open to the public 10 till 5 on Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, actually wow. Memorial Day. And we have some hydrangeas here, and they are starting to bloom. And we were talking earlier, these hydrangeas are a little bit different than some like the mop heads people might be thinking about. That's right. So what, what kind are these? These are called, the, these are part of the Serrata family. They are uh, Japanese in, in heritage. Um, they're a little bit more compact than some of the uh, traditional mop heads and lace caps, which is nice. Um, several of them are mop head, but generally this family is lace cap. What's fun about them is they leaf out later, um, but they bloom earlier. They're usually in bloom for us by Memorial Day. Which is, which is nice, because you know I have some of the hydrangeas at home that aren't even starting to show much signs of blooming yet right. so yes. to get an early bloom is, is super nice well and they're more compact as well so that's for the small container gardener right. or for a small spot in the in your garden on because we're all running out of room in our gardens yeah, yeah. i'm sure um, but i brought out four of them that i uh, just love the serrata family i have an addiction to the serrata family i think i have over 54 different varieties. oh wow yes I have a problem. I say I have a Serrata <laughs> problem. But these are some of my favorite yeah. finds. Okay, um, so what, what's this guy right This here? one is called Akashino Tamari. Um, you can see it's very much like a mop head. It's starting to show a little bit of color there. Uh, pink or blue, depending on the pH of the soil. The fun part about the Serrata family is you get a different plant. It changes from season to season. So you get the, the green leaf. Um, but the leaves will turn red in the fall and the blooms will also have some interesting reds oh, or fine. like this Benny, B-E-N-I, Benny, 
has a white bloom now, but it will turn blood red in the fall. And then this guy is pretty cool. Here yeah, too, the dark stems. The dark stems. A lot of the the serratus will have dark stems, but this is the darkest one. This is Kiro Humi. Wow. Yes, I just it's attractive every every day of the whole growing season. Yeah, very very pretty. And, and very dark. You know, some of them are a little more pale. This one's a little bit darker in its pigments when it fills in. Very pretty. And then one one other one in the front there. And that's Mako. Um, it, it, again, it's another mop head, very compact, even more compact than Akashino Tamari, probably at two to three feet at the most. Very nice. And you guys have a huge selection out here. I mean, about how many varieties of your hydrangeas oh, are you growing? Oh, I think I have 240 or 50 online, but we've got 320. Wow. And I just got another one this week. <laughs> You know, so if you're looking for a hydrangeas, make sure you come out here this weekend um, and visit Kristen and the Hydrangeas Plus. You know, for more information on, on your site here, you can go to the website or you can go to gardentime.tv and we'll click you over. So, you know, we're super excited for hydrangea season. I have them in my yard and I think one of these might be coming home with me today. <laughs> Great.